Attribute number two, the food likeness of God, part 10. Meditation number 15, satisfies with his face or presence. Psalm 17, 6. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show the wonder of your great love, you who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Verse 15. And I, in righteousness, will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. What is wonderful about this attribute? The face of God stands in the center of verse 15 like a brilliant glowing jewel. In the first half, David speaks of his access through righteousness and his goal to see. In the latter half, he speaks of the result, sanctification. It all revolves around God's face or presence. All that matters in life are those things that either lead up to or result from being in God's presence. That's all life is. What else is there? What pursuit is of any value at all if it does not lead you closer to God's presence or result from the experience of being in His presence? If you thoroughly study and memorize every verse in the Bible, but it does not lead you into His presence, what good is it? You have opened the mouth of your servant, dear Lord, and placed real food in it, and I am satisfied. I am utterly satisfied with knowing you, even if there's nothing else. If you took away my marriage and kids and home and family and friends and money, I would be satisfied sitting here with you. The pleasures of the world give thrilling feelings, but never satisfaction. Apart from God's presence, they just keep intensifying the lust more and more until Satan has achieved his goal, and then the anxiety-driven lust gives way to painful regret, emptiness, discouragement, and depression. Sin feels good, but it does not satisfy. When enslaved to inward passions for this world, your mind and spirit become agitated, perplexed, and discontented. But in his presence... You are at rest in wonderful peace. Verse 15, When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. What a wonderful experience. To wake up already satisfied before having done anything? When you first open your eyes in the morning, realizing you are in the presence of God and being satisfied, any other good thing that happens that day is gravy. And if that is true of literal sleep, surely the principle also applies to waking up out of a period of stupor in your life. We have periods of spiritual dullness and dryness, neglecting fellowship with God and loving God with weak affections. Only God can awaken a person from that. And when he does wake us up to the beautiful vision of his glory, we become satisfied with seeing his likeness. And how much more does the principle apply to the resurrection? Oh, that great day when God will appear in all his glorious majesty, and we will see him face to face with our physical eyes, unhindered by the limitations of our faith, and we will be like him when we see him as he is. What effect would it have on your heart if you were to consciously experience the face of God today? experiencing this attribute. Seeing God by faith means perceiving and experiencing his attributes. This is exactly why these daily meditations have sections titled, What is Wonderful About This Attribute? and Experiencing This Attribute. 
Use these meditations each day to rivet your attention on what God is like. Meditate on the passages of Scripture and pray fervently for Him to open your eyes to what is delightful about Him. Lord, let the experience of seeing your glory through faith now be so wonderful that it creates insatiable, eager longing for that day when I will see you face to face. Think, what could you do in your morning routine to make enjoyment of his presence your very first action each, each day? Promise to trust today. Psalm 17, 15. I, in righteousness, I will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. <laughs>